Hello students, this is our first lecture and we will be completing this chapter in various parts and first part starts from this. Your first unit of 12th class is about the reproduction, reproduction in organisms. Our first chapter is the introductory chapter about the reproductive processes. Second chapter specifically talks about plants and third unit, third chapter specifically talks about the reproduction in human beings. So let's begin today's lecture. Reproduction, basically it is a process, process by which living organisms produce offspring of their same kind, right? And next point about the reproduction is that it is not a defining feature. In class 11, first chapter you have studied about reproduction is not a defining feature. That means if reproduction is not happening in any organism, so it, it doesn't mean that the, uh, life doesn't exist there, right? If a couple is children or cannot be a child, so but they are living organisms. So reproduction is not a, a defining feature of the life, it doesn't define life. Example, another example which is mentioned in your books is about the mule, right? Next, next definition is lifespan. What is lifespan? Basically, it is a journey of any organisms. You can say it is a period from the birth to natural death, natural death of the organism. If any organism is just born, so that organism is not reproductively active. First growth phase will occur, then maturity comes. After this, this is the reproduction. After certain stage, a person, women, in case of women, menopause occurs. So reproductive ability stops in case of women. After that, aging occurs and last for last stage of any life is the death. So basically it is a journey from the birth to death. Right? And lifespan can be short or long depending upon the organism. In your NCRD in first age, uh, lifespan of all organisms are given, some, some blank spaces are given, you have to fill that, right? So this is a, a data which is important from a deep point of view. The shortest lifespan is of day fly, it's a one day insect, so lives for only one day, 24 hours. And longest lifespan is about tortoise, parrot, bats, eucalyptus, lives for 1000 years. So this is a short data you have to memorize. And we really have another important point which is mentioned in your NCRT is that lifespan is not necessarily correlated with their size. Size ka lega lega nahi hai lifespan se, right? Jaise ki crows aur parrot ki baat karte hai, udho ka size kya hai? Same hai, almost almost same hai, right? But when we talk about the lifespan, there is a difference. 15 years is of crows and about 40 years is of parrot. So, lifespan is not correlated with the cells. This point you have to memorize. Next uh, is about the type of reproduction. Two types of reproduction have been observed. Asexual and sexual. Asexual is single parent is involved and in sexual, two parents are involved. In the next part, we will talk about, next we will talk about the basic differences between sexual and asexual. So let's talk about the differences between the asexual and sexual reproduction. These seven points are very important and you have to memorize these points. This question can be asked in your school exams as well. So, note down all the seven points. Take up all that, take a note down all the seven points. First point, it is a uniparental process. That means, single parent is involved. Sexual reproduction, it is a biparental process. That means, two parents are involved. Right? It is, this process is 
found in lower organisms, plants, fungi, and this is found sexually is found in almost all the animals, plants, and other life forms, including fungi. And this third important point is that gametes are not formed because it is a single process, uh, single parental process. Gametes are not formed. If gametes are not formed, then there will be no fusion of the gametes. No fusion means no fertilization, right? So these two points are important. Whereas in sexual reproduction, female and male gametes are formed. Female gametes, in case of human bees, you can say it is the ova, and male gametes is the sperm. And very interesting point, which I will tell you, is that see. Ova is not fertile and female egg is larger in size as compared to the sperm. Why? Because it consists of all the nutrients whereas sperm, sperm is the only cell which has flagella in case of, female, or in case of human beings, right? Therefore, it is fertile and it doesn't retain any nutrients. So, this is the reason why ova is larger in size and compared to the sperm. Okay? So, if male and female gametes are being formed, then there will be a fusion. Fusion means, see, this is the egg and this is the sperm. Colloidal level is egg. And very important point is that gametes are always and always hybrid in nature, right? So there will be a fusion of the gametes, fusion of gametes to form a zygote, single cell zygote, N N two N, and this zygote is formed, right? So this process by which gametes are formed. The, uh, uh, that happens by the biopsis, right? Individual is deployed. Reduction division occurs, then gamete is formed, egg, which is haploid in nature. After that, there is a fusion of the gametes to form a diploid zygote. Later on, this zygote divides bitotically, bitotically to form bitopsis Bitotically to form the embryo, right? If mitosis is occurring, then colloidal level remains the same. Only there is the increase in the number of the cells. So, embryo, okay, later on adult, which will be formed, will be deployed. So, diosis is the reduction division, mitosis is the equational division, where at we are by person. That's why next point is about the chromosomes are haploid throughout the process. Because in case of asexual reproduction, we will talk about the bacteria. Say bacteria or uh, everyone, right? This is a single cell organism. It will divide, attain the larger size, and later on nucleus divides and Two daughter cells are formed like this. So this process is occurring throughout biotopsis and if organism is egg, so daughter cells will be egg and adult will also be egg. Got it? So chromosomes are haploid throughout the process. And next point, unique meiosis, haploid gametes are produced from diploid germ cells. Spermatogonia at the Ugolia, right? So, these three points are very important, which explains about the process of cell cycle which is involved, that is mitosis and meiosis. I hope it is clear to you. Next point is it allows the continuity of genetic information through progeny. And here in sexual reproduction, genetic variation occurs because two different individuals are involved, right? Therefore, variation will occur and variation forms the basis of evolution to occur, right? Whereas, in case of asexual organisms, if any variation is occurring, that 
that variation will occur only through the mutation because meiosis we are variation processes not naturally important in sexual reproduction right next is the it produces offspring very rapidly because it's a unipotent nothing happens in organisms and we want uh, grows in size and then divide grows in size and then divide so it produces progeny very rapidly and it produces offspring less rapidly so this was about the asexual and sexual reproduction next we will talk about the asexual reproduction in detail where are, there are different processes of asexual reproduction different methods involved in the asexual reproduction next we will talk about the that methods okay so let's talk about the asexual reproduction and different types of the asexual reproduction processes now asexual reproduction as said earlier that production of offspring by a single parent and offspring which are produced are genetically and morphologically identical and also the exact copies of their parent that means they are exactly similar to their parents and such offspring are known as clones clones are group of individuals which are genetically and morphologically identical and produced by a single parent so that are known as the clones or another thing of clones is the graft right so clones are produced by the process of asexual reproduction so different types first type of asexual reproduction is about the budding right today i will just give the introduction of different types of processes of asexual reproduction in the next class i will talk about all these processes in point detail right so budding most common it is seen in the yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae what happens in the yeast see daughter organism grow from a small bud see this is the nucleus and this is the vacuum right small protrusion is formed on the parent body got it here this nucleus divides right nucleus divides nuclear division is occurring and one nucleus is going into this exogenous bud exogenous bud means which is for all outside the parent body right so later on when this bud grows in size it detaches from the parent body and a daughter bud a daughter is is formed right so next process is binary fission you must have studied about this process in uh, previous classes most common example of binary fission is amoeba okay right? as the name indicates binary means our uh, two daughter cells are formed what happens in this parent cell parent cell is there parent cell grows in size nucleus first divides wherever nucleus division is taking place that term is known as karyokinesis after that see you can see a constriction which is formed right constriction is formed like this constriction is formed and what you think is goes into the another uh, total uh, colony and with this cytoplasmic division take place cytoplasm which is used uh, here will be cytokinesis karyokinesis karyo means nucleus kinesis means division so whenever nucleus division taking place you will say that karyokinesis uh, uh, then whenever cytoplasmic division taking place you will say cytokinesis is happening later on daughter cells are formed right very important point you will see that amoeba cell or unicellular organisms are immortal they have a die see here the parent cell has grown in size and divided to form the daughter cells parent cell 
has lost its originality, right? Whenever we are, we talk about human beings, we give the issue of birth to a young one, right? We give birth, birth to young one. So parents are still there. But in case of this, parents has converted into the daughter cells, which means that they are important, they never die. Got it? Next process is zoospores. Zoospores, these are motile spores. Motile and whenever spore formation is taking place, spore formation always occurs under the adverse conditions. To overcome the unfavorable conditions, spore formation takes place. Zoospores, these are the motile spores. How motile? Because they have the fresna and very common example is of the clubidogras. What happens? See, this is a Chlamydogras and one of them matures, divide and divide and forms the many progenies and then they will bear the flagella around them and detaches and again released in the, this form. So this cycle goes on. So microscopic botanic structures are known as the zoospores. Next is the Cordelia. Cordelia, a very common example is Penicillia. This is the common case of the fungus. This is Cordelia. These are dormitory spores. This is also a type of spores, exosphere spores, which are found in chains. Right? So, in case this Cordelia structure is found in case of Penicillia in the chain like structures. Here you can see, focus on this diagram. This is the hyphen and chain like structures Cordelia's are formed. Once they get mature, then detaches from the parent body and give rise to a new organism. Gibbules. Gibbules, this is very, very important and question which is commonly asked in the deal exams or in your uh, school exams also. Gibbule formation, see, basically it is a sac like structures and Specules are formed like this, right? So these are the hardest structures, these are formed and sand like structures commonly seen in the squatches. One question is framed from this. This uh, all the diagrams are given on one page in, the, in your NCRT. You have to memorize that. In case of this, this can be asked like this: penicillium, corridia, clamidogras, zoospores. Batch to call this batch to contemporary question is Aata hai and Jibule is very very important which is seen in the sponges. So that's all for the today's lecture. This is just about the introduction. If you have any doubt then you can ask me or drop a message and the assignments and notes related to today's lecture I upload it, solve it and if you have any problem then let me know. Ok.